How are you doing, math learners? This is your free access math teacher, Ash, and welcome to NL with Sir Ash. Today, we will be discussing about the complements of the set. So, hit that subscribe button and notification bell for you to be updated for cool math videos just like this. In this video, before we will go to our proper discussion, the objectives are as follows. First, we will define and describe what is the complement of a set. Second, we will find the complement of a given set. And third, we will solve Venn diagrams in order to know the complement of a set. Okay, so first, let's have a quick activity. Suppose, in a given university, there are 8,000 students. Alright. Now, among these 8,000 students, 2,000 are freshmen, meaning grade 7. 3,000 are second year students or grade 8 students. While 1,000 are third year students. And the remaining 2,000 are fourth year students and five fifth year students okay now this is the problem suppose you have to get one student out of the group but this student must not be a second year student the question is how many possible choices do you have okay since we are getting a student from the group of 8000 but there is a restriction the student is not a second year student. Okay, so from the 8,000, we will exclude 3,000 students because the 3,000 students are second year students. So therefore, if we consider our math, we will only have 5,000 students to select from in order to get this certain student. That is how we get the concept of the complement of a set. So the question is, what is a complement of a set? By definition, the complement of a set is denoted by an apostrophe. So if we consider set A, the complement of set A is A with an apostrophe. What does this mean? This means that we are considering elements that do not belong to a certain set. So for this set, complement of A, we tend to get the elements outside of A. Okay, so the question is, how do we know the cardinality of sets? We already know from our previous discussion that cardinality is expressed with the N of A. This means that this is the number of elements inside set A. Now, in order to get the cardinality of the complement of a set, we just get our universal set the cardinality of the universal set minus the cardinality of set A. So the difference of these two is the cardinality of the complement of set A. Okay, let's have an example. Okay, now, let's consider this first example. Say we have our universal set with the elements 0 to 9. And we have a set A that has the elements 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. The question is, how do we get the complement of set A? Now, as what I said earlier, that the complement of set A are those elements that are not found in set A. So, since this is our universal set, we will find the numbers that do not belong to this set. Okay, so 0 belong. So, we will start with 1, with 3, with 5, with 7, and with 9. So, technically speaking, if we would consider this one, set A, union of the complement of set A, is equal to our universal set. Because everything in A and everything in the complement of A comprises our universal set. So this is very easy, right? Now let's consider some challenging questions. 
Example number two. Okay, here for our second example, we have our universal set as the list of elements one, two, three, four, and five. Our set A has the elements two and four. Our set B has the elements one and five. Now, question: What is the complement of A? Now, since this is our A, we will not consider our B, but we will just consider what are the elements that is not found in set A in terms of our universal set. So therefore, so we will just look at this given, and since 2 and 4 here is already a member of A, therefore, those not listed in A are what we call the complements of A. So for this problem, what is the complement of A? We have 1, 3, and 5. Okay, so that answers our problem. Second problem, what is the complement of set B? Now, since this is our set B, we just need to consider this in terms of our universal set. So, 1 to 5 is our universal set, and our B is 1 and 5 only. Therefore, the numbers that do not belong to our set B are 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so... Now, here is an operation about unions. Okay, so we already know that union is the combination of a set and another set, depending on how many sets we're talking about, right? So what is the union of the complement of A and the complement of B? This is our complement A and the complement of B. So we just need to write all our members in this given operation. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. Now, as you can see, they already have a common here, common element, but that doesn't answer our problem. Our problem here is the union. So when we say union, it is all, or it is the combination of the given sets being talked about. Okay, so that answers our problem in question number three. Now, the question here is, what is the cardinality of the complement of B? So we have here our complement of B, right? So the cardinality is how many elements are there in a given set? So that is 2, 3, and 4. There are 3 elements. So the cardinality of the complement of B is 3. And that answers our problem in the second example. Now let's go further. So now we are in our third example. Given the universal set, the numbers from 1 up to 8. And we also have set A as 1, 2, 3, and 4. We also have another set that has the elements 2, 4, 7, and 8. Question, what is the complement of A? So same as what we did earlier, we will consider this set in terms of this set. Okay, so what are the elements that are not found in these sets? Okay, so we have here 1, 2, 3, 4, which belongs to set A. So therefore, our, our elements for the complement of A are 5, 6, 7, and 8. Okay, now, we go to our second problem. What is the complement of B? So, we will consider this set in terms of our universal set. So what are the elements that is not found in our B that is already in the universal set? So these are 1. 3, 5, 6, and 6. That's it. Okay, so we answered our second problem. Now, question. What is the intersection of the complement of A and the complement of B? Now, question. What is an intersection? Intersection is where the two sets have in common. So, this is our first set and this is our second set, right? From the given problem. Now, what numbers are in common in this given two sets? So, we can see here that there is 5 and 6 also available in our complement of B, 5 and 6. Therefore, the answer for our intersection of the complements of A and B are 5 and 6. And that is how we answer this problem. Now, let us go in using Venn diagrams. Okay, math learners, we are down to our final example. So in this example, I will teach you how to use Venn diagrams as a process to solve the problems about 
sets and the complements of sets. Okay, so we have here a table in which set A refers to letters that like to sing. Set B refers to the letters who love to dance. And set C are the letters who love acting. And then set D, we have letters who don't like to do any of the three. So, in order for us to, to clearly understand the people who are doing multiple tasks and people who do not do multiple tasks, we need to consider a Venn diagram. Okay, so I have already wrote the people who don't like any because these are what we call the outsiders who are loners of the people of the group. Alright, the loners of the group. So we will have three circles. Each circle represents the set. The activity of a set. Okay. So this is the set for singing, the set for dancing, and the set for acting. Okay. So first is you write here in this circle the activity that the people or the letter in the set A. So we have E, F, G, H, and I. Okay. So regardless of where the, the location is okay. okay. Now let's consider this example. We have I, oops, I here is also a member of A. So therefore, we will consider the intersection of A and B. So we will put I here. And we will delete here in the exclusive group. Alright. So, I, J. So there is no J here. Okay. So J, K, and L. Okay. L. Okay. So we are finished in the two sets. Now let's go to the third set. We have F. For this circle, this is the third set. We have F. But F here is also a member of the first group. So we will consider the intersection. So we put F here instead of this one. Okay. And then we have H. Another H here. Okay. So H here. We will erase this one. And then we have I. Oh. As we can see, I, I, and I is a member of the three sections or the three sets. So therefore, where is the intersection of the three sets here? This is the region. So therefore, we will delete our I here and we put it on the center. Okay, which means this I is a member of A, a member of B, and a member of C. And we also have P. Okay, no P from the other sets. So we put it P here. And then our loners M, N, and O. Okay, so this is how we represent our members in this table into our Venn diagram. So now let us answer our given problems. What is the universal set? Remember that the universal set has the elements of all the sets. Okay, so we just write all of our letters here. We have E, F, G, H, I, I, G, K, G, K, L, F, we already have F, H, I, P, then M, N, and O. Okay. Now remember that the, the arrangement of the members in a certain set doesn't affect your answer. Okay. Now let us go to our A union of the complement of B. Okay. Our A, in this figure, our A here is this one, right? So, our A here is this one, so we write all our A. We have E, G, F, H, I. E, G, F, H, I. Okay. Then, what are the complements of B? The complements of B means outside of B. If this is our B, all the members or all the elements that is outside of B, that is the complement of B. So therefore, we have M and O and P. M and O and P. Alright, so that answers our problem. Now, I didn't write this one because that is already there for our A. Okay, because remember, in writing elements in a given set, do not write repeating list or the repeating elements. Okay. Okay, now let us answer the third problem. The complement of A, union of C. So our C here is this one, right? So we can write first the members of the C because since this is a union, 
we tend to combine them. Okay. I, F, H, and P. I, F, H, and P. Okay. Now, what is or what are the what are the members or elements that is outside of A? Complement of A. Okay. So outside of A, these are the letters. Okay. But we already wrote P. So therefore we only have J, K, L, M, and O. J, K, L, M, N, and O. Okay. And that answers our problem for this given figure. Okay. Now here is a quite challenging question. B, union of D, but the complement of that one. Okay. So this is our D, right? This is our B, right? So the union are J, K, L, I, M, and O. Now, what we will do here is very simple. We consider it in terms of the universal set. So we have B, we have D, set D, okay? The set B and the set D. So anything that is part of B and set D is not an answer for this problem. So therefore, we only have E, G, F, H, and P. Alright. E, G, H, F, and P. Okay, and that answers our problem. E, G, F, H, and P. Now, let us go to our final problem. The complement of A, intersection of B. Now, we are talking about intersection. So when we say intersection, that is the common element. Okay. This is our B, right? our B. And outside of B is this one. So, sometimes, we, we can use shading in order for us to know the, the intersection of the given operation. Now, I will shade B. Okay? Now, that is the shade for B. Now, I will shade for the complement of A. So this is our A. So outside of A, I will shade. So do not write anything that is part of A. Alright. Now, I have shaded the B and I have shaded the outside of A or the complement of A. Now, for me to answer this problem, I just need to look at the shaded region in which two shades intersected each other. So, as we can see here, no, there is only one shade. One shade, one shade, one shade, one shade, one shade. But in this part, this one. Okay. This is two shades, right? So therefore, I have J, K, and L for the answer of this problem. Okay, J, K, and and that answers our given problems. Now, I hope you get the discussion for this four different examples. And now for me to know that you understood our discussion, this is the exercise part. Hopefully you understand our discussion for today, math learners. This is your free access math teacher, Sir Ash. And remember, it is really fun to learn mathematics if we are together learning. Thank you and God bless.